We now are very pleased to welcome back to the program the Honorable Nikki Haley, former governor of South Carolina, former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, founder of Stand for America PAC. And Madam Ambassador, great to have you. Thanks so much, Guy. It's great to be with you again. Let's start on the home front and a situation that you've been watching very closely. We've been covering it now for months because ever since the first indication started to percolate that the Democrats might be trying to actually steal an election in Iowa, we've been all over it. And so far, they continue down that path. You have been very concerned about what you're seeing Give us your thoughts on Iowa's 2nd Congressional District and what Democrats are still attempting to do there. Well, um, this is a major Pelosi power play. If she follows through with it, um, number one, she guarantees us that we win 2022, that's for sure, because I think literally um, everyone will turn against her. What you have is Marionette Miller Meeks is a fantastic candidate. I campaigned for her prior to November. She has hit the ground running in Congress, and, you know, she won by six votes, but she did win and was certified by a bipartisan committee. Um, Her opponent, Rita Hart, had the opportunity to appeal um, in Iowa. She chose not to, and instead she chose to run to Pelosi. And now Pelosi's claiming that she has the right to possibly make this power grab and give Rita Hart the seat. And, you know, what we're saying is Stand for America PAC immediately endorsed Marionette again to say, look, Number one, she won. She did it the right way. She was fully certified and now is sitting in Congress and is trying to do her job. If the Democrats are so beholden to think that they can do this, I mean, they will not only face the wrath of the Republicans, but they'll face the wrath of the people of Iowa. I'm just amazed. The people of Iowa made this decision, and the idea that suddenly the people in D.C. are going to overturn it is unthinkable. Right. They didn't even challenge. They strategically chose not to challenge the certified recounted results in that district within the Iowa court system because they knew they would lose under the law, under the rules. So instead, they want Washington to overturn it. And I have to say, Madam Ambassador, I'm so old that I remember when the Democrats and a lot of Republicans, in my view, rightfully, were very upset and very concerned about any political party trying to question or undermine faith in elections and challenge state certified elections that was seen as the height of irresponsibility and anti-america anti-democracy and then just weeks later they turn around and hop aboard many of them this train to truly try to steal an election it's an amazing bit of turnabout well it's hypocritical um to say the least and i will tell you i think all of america should be paying attention to this race in iowa because if they get away with this um there's no telling what else they're going to try and push through but we're going to fight back we're going to fight back for marionette she's a fantastic congressional member she's really hit the ground running the last i talked to her just a couple weeks ago and she was actually giving COVID shots to patients in iowa Um, yeah she's a doctor she's just one She is. And she's one we don't want to lose. And so I think, you know, whether you're from Iowa or not, uh, you know, she deserves to have us fight for her. Yeah. And we had her on the show and I was sort of taken aback by how composed she was. I mean, I would be beside myself (laughs) if I were an elected member of Congress and the other party was trying to steal my seat away. Uh, But she was really stuck to the facts, was very calm and measured. And I think it makes what they're attempting to do look even worse and it's already bad. Even if even if she was reacting to it poorly, it would be terrible. She's reacting, I think, in a classy and correct manner. Let's talk about another big piece of news this week. And I think this goes to a lot of your experience at the United Nations, diplomacy, and dealing with the government in Beijing, the Chinese Communist Party. We have this WHO report that came out, and it's supposedly supposed to shed some light on the origins of COVID-19. And we know all the ways in which communist China put their thumb on the scale, did not allow access to certain data and information and limited access to crucial information and locations. They had veto power over who got to serve on the investigative team. They did most of the investigating themselves and then just handed it off to WHO. I read all of it and 
not the whole not the whole report, but I read all of these details and said, well, this is just plainly propaganda from the Chinese. It's almost worse than putting out no report at all. But there are some people, Ambassador, who are saying, well, the report says that it's extremely unlikely that the origin was a lab in Wuhan and sort of like, you know, the, the lab leak or that whole theory. What do you make of this? Why should anyone put one scintilla of stock in any element of a report that was controlled and dominated and fixed, frankly, by the Chinese Communist Party? They shouldn't. The World Health Organization lost every ounce of credibility it had when it refused to listen to Taiwan back in December when they said there was human-to-human transmission. Instead, um, Tedros got on an airplane, flew to China, got his marching orders, and then only came back um, afterwards and ended up doing something about it. Millions of people have died. The idea that, um, you know, this report's going to be nothing but Chinese propaganda, but it goes, it's bigger than that guy. I mean, what we have to look at is what is the Biden administration doing? Here you have China goes and embarrasses our team from the State Department in Alaska. Putin goes and challenges Biden to a debate. China goes and does this 25-year deal with Iran, which is going to have massive implications for America and the rest of the world. China is now going and making friends with North Korea while North Korea is doing ballistic missile testing, challenging us again. Where is the Biden administration? They are acting completely naive. They're acting like they're way over their head in this. And at some point, they've got to stand up. The idea that a dozen countries have come out and said, we don't buy what the World Health Organization is saying in this report. We want an independent commission. We should be leading the charge on that. We shouldn't just be leading the charge on that. We should be allying with those dozen countries and more to boycott the Chinese Olympics. I mean, here, China allowed millions of people to die. And not one time has the finger been pointed back at them. And they're going to turn around. And, and, you know, you've got to look at what happened when they hosted the Olympics last time. And that was they're all about show and they're all about perception. That was them telling the world, look out for us. Look at what we've become this time. There's no mistake on what their intentions are when they host this next um, Olympics. It is their way of showing the world that they are the number one superpower. For us to ignore the fact that millions of people died from COVID that happened in their country that they didn't tell anyone, for us to ignore the fact that millions are in concentration camps and that they're committing genocide and no one's doing anything, we said years ago, never again. Never again would we allow people to die and look the other way. We're allowing that to happen, and Biden's nowhere to be found. And not to mention, you know, Hong Kong and crushing democracy there. They took another horrible step down that path uh, in Beijing just this week. And it's it is amazing. There are millions. This is just a fact. There are millions of ethnic minority people of color, Muslims in concentration camps in China actively. They're being forced into labor. They're getting forced abortions and sterilization. They're being experimented on in some cases. There's systemic rape and sexual abuse. They're being brainwashed to abandon their faith. People are dying. I mean, this is this is established. The BBC has been thrown out of the country because they've reported on it. And Apparently, it's like almost xenophobic or racist to talk about it. That's the way some people on the left frame it. And we want well, to then send our athletes to, to Beijing to give them this PR coup and the prestige of the international stage in the Olympics. I just don't know how that's defensible at this point, given their conduct. It's not defensible. Canada has already come out and said that they think we should be, um, you know, boycotting it. Australia is already taking a lot of heat from China. But mark my words, once they finish hosting the Olympics, once they brag to the world that they are the number one superpower, they will take over Taiwan without any question whatsoever. That's their next step. This is all what they're trying to do. It's dangerous, and we have got to get smart. We've got to get strategic, and we need to have a spine. We can't sit there and just continue to watch this go by. And for Biden to say China has an agenda, you know, we understand that. No, you don't just need to understand it. You need to be getting with other leaders in the world and combating it. 
This is a country that's now doing multiple things on artificial intelligence. They're continuing to steal intellectual property. The way they have partnered with everyone, this deal that they made with Iran is extremely dangerous because they agreed to cooperate on military. They agreed on an oil deal, which basically means the, that Iran no longer needs to count on the U.S. or the Europeans for the Iran deal. They've got enough money now to fund all of their proxies in Syria, in Yemen, and Iraq to continue to do all the bad deeds that they're doing. Then they also agreed on a Chinese-Iranian bank cooperation, which is one more step that China is making, along with Russia, along with North Korea. They're trying to push to where the U.S. dollar is no longer the reserve currency. This is dangerous. This is getting to a point where we can't just turn the other way because China will be taking over and we're just sitting back and watching it happen. It's just truly unthinkable that we're allowing all this to happen and just not standing up, not trying to get with our allies, not doing anything about it. We're talking to Nikki Haley here on The Guy Benson Show. And I want to revisit something that you said just a moment ago. You were critical of the Biden administration, the State Department's performance at that Alaska summit with their Chinese counterparts, which got testy, it seemed like. And they did a lot of histrionics over on the Chinese side. We see that often from totalitarian regimes, the finger pointing, the false equivalencies. I have seen conservatives complain that Team Biden was not forceful enough. What specifically was your concern with what they did or didn't do and what should they have done differently in your view? Well, I think they were caught flat footed. And, and, you know, it's not to to blame Secretary Blinken, because I think he went in there thinking that they were going to have this conversation. But what I don't think they realize is you're dealing with a different China today than you were even a few years ago. When I first got into the United Nations, China was still very um, quiet in their tone, would only raise issues behind closed doors, didn't want anyone calling them out, and didn't call anyone out publicly. They were very careful. After I had been there a year, once um, President Xi pretty much named his himself king by getting rid of term limits, the entire tone of China changed. They became very aggressive. They started calling countries out. They started putting their fingers in countries' faces saying, you better vote with us or we're going to pull the debt. It got, it was a complete 180. And I don't know that they were prepared for that. When China sat down and started to criticize us, they should have immediately gotten up and walked away, period. You don't sit there. You don't listen to it. You don't have it. China has no right to lecture us. We should never even let the rest of the world see that they were able to say that. And I think either they didn't do their preparation, they didn't do their homework, they didn't see this coming, because there is no way sitting at the United Nations, if they had ever done that across the table from me, that I would have taken it and I wouldn't have fought back and I wouldn't have gotten up and walked out. They didn't even deserve the credibility of coming to Alaska, coming on our in our neck of the woods, criticizing us. It's unacceptable. They should never have allowed that to happen. Final subject, Madam Ambassador, it's the situation at the southern border. I know the White House refuses to use the word crisis. I think virtually everyone else understands how ludicrous that is, although not the Associated Press. They're telling their journalists, don't use that word, uh, which I'm sure the Biden administration appreciates. But by any stretch, by any definition to a reasonable person, obviously it's a crisis. It's getting worse. The numbers are astounding. Uh, I saw a report today that Border Patrol thinks all in total there are going to be a million people who will attempt to enter the country illegally this year, a million. And I do wonder if the absolute refusal to even acknowledge reality, not just rhetorically but in terms of policy, is going to really start to burn This White House, this administration, because the crisis that they've created is patently unacceptable. And they were the side yelling and screaming about kids in cages. And now there are more kids in more cages than ever before. You know, we're hitting this is going to hit the worst numbers in at least 20 years. And what I can um, tell you is what I saw today that was happening in Donna, Texas, is Um, just unconscionable. And the idea that Biden and Kamala have not shown up there at all is negligent. It is something that is really um, unbelievable. It's almost like they think if they don't see it, it's not really there. 
when I actually worked on this when I was at the United Nations, because when we had this massive border situation um, and, and President Trump was in the heat of everything that was going on and he was getting heavily criticized for for kids in cages. The thing is, he did something about it. But the way the Trump administration handled it was the right way to do it. You know, these countries, most of these migrants are coming from Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador. These countries are not anti-American countries, especially Honduras and Guatemala. They're actually friends of ours. And what President Trump did was, you know, we, you know, I always said we were taking names and we took the names of our enemies. But we also took the names of our friends and we told the truth. And that's what President Trump did. He went to he he told Honduras and Guatemala. I actually went there and communicated it as well and said, look, you can't have these caravans coming to Mexico. They have to stop where they start. We will partner with you. But if you want to have a partnership with us, you have to do your part. They right now, they've got issues with drug smuggling. They've got human trafficking. They've got poverty. Um, they've got gangs. They've got lots of issues. But we help them train on security things there. They have to do their part to make sure they are doing everything they can to keep those people there. And then they apply for asylum. Yeah, the well, other thing is you have, you have Mexican President Obrador who just said that Biden is the one that caused all this crisis. They were at least staying in Mexico and applying for asylum there. What is happening now is a humanitarian crisis from the standpoint with these children are being abused, the things that happen to them along the way is unbelievable. Yeah, it's, and these it's terrible. gangs are paying $3,500 a person to take a child across. They're making tons of money, and these children and these people are suffering. And it's dangerous for Americans who are watching these migrants come into our country. Yeah, and when the president of Mexico is blowing up the talking point, <laughs> the talking point is dead, but apparently the White House hasn't gotten the memo yet. Well, our guest has been Nikki Haley, former South Carolina governor, former U.S. ambassador to the U.N., and founder of Stand for America PAC. Madam Ambassador, really enjoyed it. Hope to talk to you again soon. 